Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render a translucent uh, character like this slug here. We're going to make him sort of translucent like you'd expect a sort of slug to be. And I'm going to mix in this pattern to one of the subsurface scattering nodes once we get into Maya. Uh, but first I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done here. So this is just a work in progress. I've just been messing around with sort of what patterns and stuff I might do on him. Um, I'm probably going to change this quite a bit, I think, before the final. But I just wanted to sort of show you guys what I'm up to with it. Um, if, in case you saw it on my Instagram or something like that. So basically I've got a model here. This is the high poly version. It's already been UV mapped in the low poly version, which I've already imported into Maya. Uh, what I've done, as you can see, is I've got a, a base, which is this red here, and then I've got these highlights on a separate layer and the spots on a separate layer, and the highlights are these edge parts here. What I'm going to be doing is using these highlights um, as an alpha to drive the value of our subsurface scattering, at least one of the channels of subsurface scattering once I'm in Maya. So I just wanted to point that out. So what I've actually done here is I've um, I've exported this um, looking as is and I can show you the map. So here is the map um, and you can see that it's also got an alpha channel which you can see there. So uh, you can now tell that these areas where the spots are are going to have more subsurface scattering in these areas here and these are actually the wrinkles um, and I also did the um, spots on a separate thing to see what they would look like but I didn't like it as much so I'm actually just going to roll with this whole thing um, and I will also say that um, my painting isn't being very good here I'm not very happy with my edge quality um, it's a bit too opaque the transition between being opaque and transparent is not very good so it doesn't come out looking that great once we're in Maya so I need to work on that a bit more before I finish this one up uh, but I just wanted to point that out but it will still work for the sake of this tutorial so let's jump into Maya and um, I'll show you how I have hooked it up all right so we're in Maya now and I've already applied a redshift skin to our uh, skin shader to our model and hooked up a displacement map. If you don't know how to do that, um, I've already got tutorials out on how to do that, so check back through those tutorials. Um, and yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the color map that I've created into our mid scatter color. Um, and because basically what I'm doing, I'll show you, I've just taken a quick render already. This is just a skin shader as is. So it doesn't look bad actually. It kind of has made me think a little bit about how I might actually want to paint this slug up. Uh, I might actually do something a bit simpler than this more complex thing that I've got going. But yeah, I've already got the displacement map hooked up. Um, but what I want to do is I want to have a shallow color, which is the top uh, skin layer. I want that to be sort of a light color. Um, and then I want the mid scatter, which will be the middle layer of, of, of flesh, uh, to have our color map on it. And the reason I want to do this is just so it looks like the color is... Um, just beneath the skin like it's got some thickness to it when I was looking at reference I noticed that um, particularly with uh, young slugs they tend, tend to be more translucent here's an example so you can see the spots appear beneath the skin and also like maybe this fleshy areas here and things um, like and especially here when you've got this sort of hard angle here on the on the spot it definitely appears beneath the skin this is partly because of the specularity of the slug but also because of the subsurface scattering that's being achieved and you can see it's got a, a, a bit of glow to it from this um, light coming from above it so we want to get something somewhat similar um, for this example so what we're going to do is we'll bring in our um, we'll bring in our color for our mid scatter so Go file open and open up open up that file so that's that one that I showed you in Photoshop previously so let's just take a quick render just so you can see what it looks like before I do anything to it all right so it's not having a big impact at the moment you can see this uh, lighter areas here where the um, I painted in some some sort of uh, orangey yellows to the skin and you should just be able to see the spots on the back of his uh, torso as well sort of just in there you'll see this hard edge here this is what I was talking about before with my brush quality and 3d coat I need to work out a better way to get that blending I'm, I'm so used to using brushes in Photoshop that uh, I'm finding that my 3d coat paintings got worse from having used Photoshop so I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit um, but I can fix this a little bit first we'll have a look at some settings though so 
with all the radiuses and the weights and stuff, that's going to be relative to your uh, the size of your model. So I'm going to turn the diffuse off for now, um, and I'm going to change some of the weights and radiuses of our um, scattering. So I've already uh, planned ahead and checked some of these out, so you don't have to watch me futz around trying to figure out what looks good. Um, so that's what I like for the single scatter. Basically, it's a it's um, fairly it's actually very thin. Um, because I really wanted the mid scatter to show through. With the uh, mid scatter, I'm actually going to use the alpha channel from our um, texture map, and I'm going to plug that into the mid weight. If you want to expand this node here, you can do so by selecting and pressing three, and they'll give you all the options. So now the alpha values are going to control the overall values of your subsurface scattering channel, and you can actually paint that in uh, manually if you want as well. So I did actually try this, but um, I wasn't getting a great result, so you can see that's sort of how I did it there. You can see that I need to get rid of that junk there, but I didn't get it. It wasn't it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, I probably have done to have done like a fill of a very sort of mm, somewhat high value 0.75 gray, um, and then feather in the white over the top of it. It might have blended a bit better, but yeah, I wasn't getting a really good result. So that is one way that you can do it though, and that does function as you'd expect if you just plug this into the the weight channel of your uh, of your mid scatter. But at the moment, I'm just using the alpha from our texture node. On the mid scatter, I'm going to have I want I want to set the radius quite high because I want it to have a lot of importance, and then I'm just going to reduce that um, deep scatter to 1.0 and the weight I think 0.9. So we're going to be seeing a lot of this mid section, but we're still going to be getting a glow throughout it from this mid uh, from the deep scatter. And actually, the default red I actually ended up liking quite a bit because of the way it multiplied with the mid color mid scatter. So you need to keep that in mind: is that these two colors will multiply the mid scatter and and also any of the others that it's coming into contact with if it's being translucent through it. So keep that in mind. Also, one other thing that you can do is if you create a um, remap HSV node, you can run your color into that and then your art color into your mid color. So you can sort of do a, a little bit of uh, viz dev on the fly. So if you want to adjust any of the, the hues and things like that, can be quite useful. Um, but let's just have a quick render of this now and see what it looks like. Uh, also, just my scene setup is I've got a dome light and I've got a sort of um, low intensity light there on the right, which I might turn up in a moment. All right, so what's happening is that we're getting the subsurface scattering happening where I've painted in the folds and in the um, on the, the spots as well. I could probably do the spots on a, on a separate channel or something as well. I, I might end up putting them on the... I might end up doing a separate um, alpha for the subsurface scattering just for the skin and stuff and then do the spots on a separate channel but for now this is sort of what it looks like so it's not bad if we get behind this like I think the, the lights a little bit too low value at the moment so we'll turn that up in a tick but you can see it's getting a little bit of glow let's turn that area light up to 25 so now we're actually seeing a bit of the subsurface scattering coming through that glow there and then also this um, the edges of the skin and up towards the stems for the eyes as well and you'll notice that when we look at it from the front, the blend between the bottom of the chin and the upper areas around the lips and stuff is a little bit better. Uh, but overall, I'm not particularly happy with the way it's sort of the, the brush strokes are way too apparent. It wouldn't look bad if I could soften it a bit, but I need to go back in and, and, and work on this a bit more. So if you want to see how this sort of comes to fruition, uh, check out the um, check out my Instagram and you can see how that works out. And I'll let you all in on those secrets and how I finished it up maybe on Facebook or something like that if you want. Now let's have a look at this um, hue remap here. So what we can do is, um, is if we just move this hue slider we can change the hue of our mid color so you can actually get some pretty cool results um, just by messing around a little bit to see you know what you like and how it's multiplying and things like that. So that might sort of inspire you to go, hey, I kind of like that green color, but I don't think the um, deep subsurface scattering is working so well with it. So then you can just go in, you know, it's getting the kind of a funky glow now. So now you can go and select your guy, uh, go to your 
skin and then maybe end up with like a green like that and see what that renders like so now it's more complementary. So that's just some ways that you can do some visual development on subsurface scattering. You can see that um, the skin node is a little, it, you get a little bit more control with the skin rather than just the standard subsurface scattering because that's just got one subsurface color. But you can see that it's quite effective. Um, these roll areas are much too opaque though compared to the rest of that uh, getting the subsurface scattering. So that will require some further development. But just to sort of show you some techniques of how to hook those things up, I thought it'd be useful just to post a quick video tutorial um, of the workflow and some things that you can consider. And hopefully those tips have been helpful. Uh, if they have been, make sure you click like so other people on YouTube can find the video. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed for tips like these and other video tutorials every week here on YouTube. If you want to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, um, keep up to date with the progression of this particular piece of art, question mark. Um, and, and if you've got any questions, you can also message me there. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.